Yes Have Some Podcast is brought to you by Carnivorous Creations, your one-stop shop for all of your proton pack building needs. If you're in the market for a proton pack, head to carnivoruscreations.com. That's carnivorous with a K. You're going to find aluminum motherboards, resin parts, fiberglass shells, and a whole lot more. Find them on Facebook at Carnivorous Creations or head straight to carnivoruscreations.com. Remember carnivorous with a K and get started on an authentic screen accurate proton pack. Uh, everything's under control. Situation normal. I don't want to grow up. Fine, of course, you want some food. Jurassic Park. Now playing the PSW. Echo goggles with Echo Bomber. Neutron of Blaster and Water Zapper. Each sold separately. From the corner penthouse of Spook Central, all the way to Star Killer Base, this is Yes Have Some Podcast. Do I? Yes Have Some. Yes, have some. You know, they told me you people were conceited douchebags. The only place in the multiverse where you can love the book, hate the movie, but still buy all the toys. I'm afraid you're just too darn loud. I'm not looking for a friend. I'm looking for a Jedi mask. A what? Please remember to hold on to your butts and get ready to get stressed. With your hosts, Craig Goldberg, Abigail Gardner, and Jacob Walsh. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to episode 105 of Yes, Have Some Podcast. I am your newly elected host. Hey, what are you doing? Abigail Gardner. What are you doing? This is your co-host, Craig Goldberg. I'm not a co-host. Jake's not even here. I fired Jake. You took over the whole show. Everything's different because we had a guest on. Oh, okay. So that's all new. Uh, hi, everybody. Craig here. Hey, guys. Uh, hi, Abby. I still have to say hey, guys, because it's like, yeah, okay. yeah, it's a knee-jerk. For- it's a knee-jerk reaction. Uh... We just talked with Trevor Morgan. We sure did. He's a new friend of the podcast. Yeah. We love him. Yes. It was a good time, right? He's a super chill dude. Yeah, very, very awesome guy. Trevor Morgan, to to. Uh, he is uh, he's an actor. He was in Jurassic Park 3. He played Eric Kirby. Uh, he was also, he's been in all these yeah, great movies. The Patriot, The Sixth Sense. Yeah, the guy's been places. Yeah. We had a fun conversation. We talked about uh, his career. We talked current movies. We talked reboots. Uh, mm-hmm. I had a lot of fun. I did too. I don't want to speak for Jake, but I think he had fun too. Yeah, I think that Jake had the most fun he of had the all most of us. Fun yeah. of everybody. Um, but uh, that's coming up right now. And don't forget, if you want to follow Yes Have Some on social media and have a little bit of fun, because Lord knows we like to have fun around here. We are here. on social media. We are on the social media at YHS Podcast, Instagram and Twitter, Facebook.com slash Yes Have Some Cast. In the official Facebook discussion group for Yes Have Some, which has been completely on fire. These Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom conversations. Whew. Have you been paying attention? Uh, there's like over a thousand comments. Uh, that can't be That's true. That's not true, <laughs> That's... but it's at least a hundred. Way uh, to go, guys. There we go. Uh, get on Facebook.com. Search Yes Have Some group therapy. We're having a lot of fun in there. And let your opinions be known. We talk about toys. We talk about movies. We talk about comics. Yeah, we stress. We stress. It's good. It's good. And uh, I say we get on with the show. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Here we go. How big of a Puppet Master fan you are. I used to own all of them until they came out with a few more. And I guess there's a new one that just came out. It's a, I think it's, it's, I think it's even like going to theaters. Place. Yeah, I think it's yeah, even it, it, like it a small theater. Room. I, uh... I ha- I was out of town when it came to uh, I'm I'm in and around the Chicago area, mm-hmm. and it went to this really great revival theater called the Music Box uh, Theater, and uh, it was there, and I freaked out, and I was out of town, and I didn't get to see it, um, but evidently it's, it's by two people who just really loved the, you know the 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 series and wanted to revamp it, um, and I'm I'm I, I can't wait to watch it. Yeah, I'm excited. I mean, I think it's like, it's got to be like part 12 or something like that. And I know... I believe so. It's, yeah, I, I'm excited to see it too. I know like the last few have been very weird and kind of nothing like the earlier films. But uh, yeah. Do, do all, you guys know my... The there's there's a good couple in there where it's actually just like three new scenes that they shot and then just <laughs> old footage from the previous films. Oh my, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, right around five or six, they start doing that quite a bit. It's pretty yeah. incredible. <laughs> have I told my... Good. Have so I told much, you can, that, the thing that I love about that franchise is, is that if you just start at five or six, you don't really need... you. They it's like you recapping. Up. Yeah, it's yeah. like recapping all the earlier films. My it's puppet... The, yeah, the, the new fan. 
My yeah. um, there's a. I don't know if I've told the story on the podcast before. Uh, my brother got the Puppet Master like box set on DVD for Christmas one year. It was like one through five or whatever. And uh, before Blu-ray hit, we had this idea like, oh, we got to sell all our DVDs. It's time to you know we're changing over. <laughs> yeah. And uh, for whatever reason, the the Puppet Master box set had gone out of print. And it was worth like at the time like hundred and eighty dollars or something like that. Wow! Um, so that's my puppet master story. Pretty cool. Uh, I, I I am holding a jester figure in my hand <laughs> right now. <laughs> oh no way! Because I have I have a friend of mine, um, one of my best friends in the whole world. His name is Lou Taylor Pucci. He's an actor. He's been uh, Evil Dead. The mm-hmm. guy stabbed in the eye. Do you remember that kid? The new yep. one. Um, yeah. He. Uh, so because he was in that movie, he's gotten to go to and, and invited to go to these horror uh, conventions. Yeah. Um, and he got to meet a guy who makes custom, like, figures. Oh, okay. Of, like, Puppet Master. And for my birth, my 30th birthday, he gave me one that was signed. That's right. I have that up in the office. Dude, that's, that's cool. Awesome. I, know, I know Full Moon is like, I, I read recently that they're, like, making molds from the original puppets and, like, I don't know if they're already for sale, but they're going to be selling like full, like full size puppets that are pulled from the original molds. That's so cool. Yeah. Fuck. I yeah, quit the podcast. I, um, I'm getting one of those. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I used to have people over. I don't, I don't know if you guys um, play this game. It's called Catan. It's pretty much, like I've heard of it. It's pretty much two yeah, hours of just yelling at each yeah. other. Yeah. My brother's like crazy into that. Yeah. Yeah, if you just if you want to hate your friends for about a good two hours, just play that game. It's a good it's fight. Fun. Yeah. I mean, I hate them already, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, I but what we used to do is, is we used to put on the puppet mat because I have, at the time there was only nine at all nine, um, <laughs> yeah. on one DVD because it was a bargain buy. Oh yeah. Um, yep. And I thought, hold on a minute, you're telling me for five dollars I can have nine puppet master movies. That's the, there must be something wrong here. I'm going to take advantage of this loophole. This obviously is a mistake by the Walmart. Um, and so we would put on the Puppet Masters, but we'd mute it, and then we'd go on Spotify and we'd put on a gangster rap um, okay. radio station. Yeah. And it's really odd how much it syncs up. <laughs> Dude, I want to go do that right now. That's great. It's a conspiracy. That's great. That happened to me once with a. Uh, yeah, it kind of puts Dark Side out of uh, Dark Side of the Moon and uh, <laughs> Wizard of Oz to shame. Yeah. There, there was one. There was one that uh, I noticed once. Uh, it was one of the early Simpsons Treehouse of Horror episodes. Was matching up perfectly to uh, Octopus's Garden by the Beatles. Oh. <laughs> I, could, I was inebriated. Maybe it wasn't. I don't know. Something happened though. That's the only way to do something like that. Right, right. Be a few deep. Anything matches up. Um, well, listen. Yeah, it's like Little House on a Prairie and like you know, Taylor Swift. Or right, something. right. Like, Wait, that's brilliant. Like really good. Yeah, I like both of those things. So listen, we should give a proper introduction here. We're here with uh, uh, Trevor Morgan, who's joining us. Have some tonight, and. Uh, Trevor, listen, man. I don't know how often you're talking about Jurassic Park three, but I I don't think it's as much as we do because it's it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, I, I got a lot of time on my hands. You'd be surprised. <laughs> um. So, but man, we really appreciate you uh, stopping by. And like before we started recording, we were just talking about uh, horror movies, and we we're trying to get Jake on the line. And yeah, we mentioned like last Halloween, we we went deep on Child's Play, and we we watched all of them again. Mm-hmm. And we're like just reviewing them and talking about how insane those movies are. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, we, a, we a like friend to of it. mine worked with Brad Dorff, who's the uh, um, the voice of Chucky. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I was really disappointed when he came back after working with him for a day on this on this thing uh, that he had no good child's play stories. He didn't oh. ask. He was so enamored with working with the man mm-hmm. that he didn't ask. Oh, okay. Like it's that way. I thought you meant that Brad Dorff didn't have any good stories. <laughs> no, he was too stressed to like, I was like oh, no, no, I was like, he could talk for hours. It's like you would think after like eight Child's Play movies, he'd have at least one he's story. One good story. Uh, yeah, and they just announced they're doing a, a Child's Play TV series, which is cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's going to be weird. That's super cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see about that. I want to go it. back a little bit. Before we get to. Any JP3 stuff, 
I want to know, so this is something that always fascinates me. When, when I'm reading your Wikipedia or your IMDb, IMDb page, how accurate are we looking at? Is it pretty spot on? or is Because I've, I've heard interviews before um, where people are the like... Wikipedia couldn't be more wrong. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm pretty sure they spell all of my, like, all of my family members' names wrong. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I think, I think, I think it, I, somehow that must have been like a bad game of telephone. But then I sort of think about it, I was like, who wrote that? Because it wasn't me. Yeah, and then I'm like, I feel bad for the person who thought they were doing a a, a nice thing for <laughs> some random. <actor. laughs> well, I mean, so it's it's like the, it's, it's like totally the wrong. weirdest fan fiction of all time. It's like they just make up a little backstory for you, and it's like kind of not right, but yeah. Yeah, and then it starts. To, then like when I look at something like that, you know, I, I'm a big Wikipedia person. I use it often. I donate it to it every year when they start like doing that thing where they ask you to donate. Yeah. Um, and I, I use it to, to hopefully using it as a reliable source of information for any type of, you know, social conversation where we're trying to call out what was or did not happen. Mm-hmm. And then I started thinking, I was like, well, wait a second. How do I know that this is right about Franklin Delano Roosevelt? <laughs> yeah, if he doesn't even know your facts, then like, how can you trust him? Right. And it's like, who, right. It, it, I've run into that before where you start like, you, you read these things and you take them as fact and then you use them in conversations and in the back of your head, like, well, maybe. Yeah, maybe Marilyn Manson wasn't in the Wonder Years. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, you start wondering if now you're just perpetually going to be full of shit for the rest of the yeah. Right, right, yeah. right. Being this thing that's all just hearsay. Right, you yeah. just start <laughs> stating things as fact and, and eventually and, they just become fact. But hopefully, hopefully, as the years go on, the the stuff, the content of Wikipedia itself will get like more and more ridiculous, right? Mm-hmm. And we'll just be like, "Well, we believe it." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I don't foresee that not happening with how much we're <laughs> just accepting in our our current world. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like, I mean, think about it. All the headlines that we look at today seem like pretty outrageous, and then. You know, you go on Wikipedia and you're like, I don't know if this guy's telling the truth. It's right, like, right. That's when we get really discerning about what is or isn't happening. Is right, Wikipedia. because it's like we're completely, <laughs> we're completely desensitized. Yeah, not by Wikipedia. Yeah, it's like when you're on, when you're watching TV and you see like Donald Trump, Dennis Rodman, and Kim Jong Un, and you're like, oh, okay, that's a thing that's happening, but you're not even questioning it. Mm-hmm. It's like we're, we're living in a weird world. So. Uh, yeah, at what point did that happen? That sounds like a funny Mad Lib from 10 years ago, right? yeah, Exactly. That literally it is a Simpsons not, it episode. Does, yeah, you, you don't need, like, how, the, yet we're living in a world where that actually happened. Right. And yeah. I, I guess it was pretty productive. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, they got some shit done. Yeah. They got, hey, here's another thing. I, uh, the fifth Jurassic Park movie just came out. And it's the number one movie in the world. It's going to make a billion dollars. It's 2018. Anything can happen. Yeah. That's pretty. That, that was a good segue, by the way. Hey, I'll know, talk he about. Back on the GP hey. When you, when you bring up Donald Trump, Kim Jong Un, and Dennis Rodman, it's like you're avoiding a rabbit hole. You brought us right back. Right, right yeah. back. You got us right back. back. <laughs> right, guys, but we're going back to the park. Hey, listen. If we can get Dennis Rodman in any kind of like film franchise. That's not what was the one double team with John Claude Van Damme. That's not really a franchise. Oh yeah, it? and then they parachute, and he pulls a parachute, and he and he, he flies down on a in a basketball. <laughs> for that part of the movie. Oh, wow, man. dude, listen. This is on my list now. You haven't seen Double Team? No. It's awesome. I, I think. Oh man, one of the best uh, buddy cop movies ever. Right. Yeah, right. Apparently. Very original. They don't like mm-hmm. rely on any like th- it's everything you every scene you're like I haven't seen that in a buddy cop movie before. <laughs> yeah. Um so I have and to it's watch a it. hell of a cast. Hey, Jean-Claude Van Damme, people forget like that was legitimate. Like he was like fourth tier, but like that yeah. it's still a top 5 tier. Dude, he was on Friends, him and Rachel. Like <laughs> I remember he was a very big deal. Um <laughs> Trevor, you said you're in the Chicago area right now. Did you grow up in that area? Uh, yes, that's where I'm originally from. Yeah. Okay, cool. Me too. I'm. I'm. Well, I always say I'm from Chicago, and then people ask what part, and then I have to tell them which suburb I'm from. <laughs> um, but I grew up in Deerfield. Uh, yeah, me and you. Me and you'll have uh, uh, similar answers then. Yeah. I wonder whereabouts you're actually from. I'm from uh, North Shore. What, what suburb? Deerfield. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Deerfield, Highland Park, Buffalo Grove, that area. 
Um, I, I still got family there. Uh, my brother is trying to fly to Chicago tonight, but all the flights are canceled because I guess the weather's pretty bad there tonight. So, so he's just watching it's not great. Week. Not yeah. great. Yeah, so he's so, yeah, he dug up his Puppet Master DVDs and he's he's just having a good time. <laughs> yeah, he's just at the airport just <laughs> sucking in some beautiful art. <laughs> he's got a, he's got a portable DVD player hooked up to the TV. Everyone's expecting CNN, but it's just the fourth Puppet Master. And everyone's just going with it. <laughs> so I'm I'm just going to have to go out on a limb here and just tell you guys if we're going to talk about horror films um that are so bad they're genius. Um I, I have one that kind of I, I want to say it's 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 a hidden gem that not many people talk about. Okay, mm-hmm. and it's kind of like the Citizen Kane of So Bad They're Good, in okay. my opinion. Um, or maybe West Side Story because it's a slight musical. Okay, <laughs> Slumber oh, Party Jay, Massacre Two. Slumber Party Massacre Two. Who? Yes. You're 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 going deep. That's a deep cut, Jake. Have you seen this one? No, I have not. But I'm I'm going to immediately. Um, yeah, I'd be interested. I want to hear what you guys think after watching it. Chris? It's um, it's, <laughs> it's really amazing. phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm both a fan of uh, horror and musicals, so uh, I'm writing this down immediately. It's a killer who kills you in your dreams using a drill at the end of an electric guitar. Okay. Oh, you know what? Um, I I know the cover of this. Yeah. I, I I've seen the cover. For the VHS, like I'm clearly seeing it in my head. I used to work in a video store, and I remember seeing that over and over, but never like actually watching the movie. That used that looks like one of the ones like when I used to go to the video store. I was so fascinated with horror, but very like deathly afraid of it. Yeah, and I wouldn't turn my back to the VHS covers on the horror aisle. Yeah, and like the April Fool's Day uh, VHS cover still haunts me. Yeah, because I want to see it. I've never seen it. But she had like a ponytail noose. It was a big deal. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't stick with you. I, I don't think I saw April Fool's Day. That was kind of when every holiday was getting their own horror movie. Although, yeah. the scariest movie. Didn't they? They remade that, too. I think, I think April Fool's Day had a remake a few years back. When, when I was a kid, me and my brothers were really into Sleepaway Camp. Yeah, like, I know that. Sleepaway Camp series. And Troll 2, which has nothing to do with the original Troll. Right. Um, Troll 2, man. uh, Yeah, we were big, big into Sleepaway Camp. Uh, That's one of the classics. That's one of the classics. Oh, yeah, totally. And then we progressed into Killer Santa movies. Um, Yeah, those are fun. I think because the, the, I think there was an episode of Tales from the Crypt that, like, terrified us where Santa was kind of moving. It's like the second episode of the like of yeah. the entire series. It's like the the guy breaks out of like a mental institution and he gets a Santa suit and he's like stalking that woman. Yeah, that's a great episode. Yeah, that one in the 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 one with Bobcat Goldthwait where he has like that weird like feature on his hand where he's a yep he's a, uh, a ventriloquist. That one also freaked us out. Really yeah, hard. that's a good show. Are they still bringing back uh, Tales from the Crypt, or is that not <clears> happening? I think that. I think it got. I think that got canned. No. Oh. Well, that sucks. That sucks. Well, yeah. Fuck. Now I'm, yeah, now bring I'm it sad. down. Yeah, let's go back to the park. <laughs> hey, Trevor. Uh, here's <laughs> no. Well, well. Before we get to the park, um. So you obviously loved horror movies, right? And you still do. You were in the Sixth Sense. Where does that rank? Like, how do you? I mean, some people consider it horror. Some people consider it more of like a thriller. But like in the pantheon of like, I mean, was that really like? Were you super stoked to do that movie when you when you because you like were a fan of the genre already? Uh yeah. I mean, to be honest, I'm. I'm it's not that I um, am only into one sect of, of movies. I'm just I just have always loved movies, mm-hmm. and um, my parents have always loved movies. So, you know, uh, in terms of how much it meant to me, I think. It wasn't necessarily only because I enjoyed the horror or spooky genre. I think I just did a very early age just loved doing it. So, you know, it was a great thing to be a part of it. Yeah. You know? And at the time, me and Haley were already friends. We had worked together um, a few times prior. So we had just been doing a movie together uh, right before that started. And... Um, 
so we basically went back to back of just working together and hanging out. Mm-hmm. So that was also a really fun uh, concept of getting to continue to work with one of your one of your buddies. Yeah, that's awesome. I was on a plane last year, and the guy next to me was watching The Sixth Sense on his iPad. And I remember I was like, fuck. I totally forgot. I, I was jealous. Like, I was like, man, share those headphones, because I hadn't seen it in so long. But it was like, it was definitely one of my favorite. Like, one of the first movies I got on DVD, it was like Sixth Sense, American Pie, and Saving Private Ryan. Mm-hmm. I watched them over, <laughs> like, those three, like, one summer. Like, that was my whole summer. Yeah. Which is weird anyways. But, uh, uh, yeah, that movie holds up, and people talk about, like, a lot of times, you know, especially something, there's that period, like mid nineties to late nineties. Um, a lot of the movies made in that time don't hold up. It's like a weird, I don't know why, maybe it's just my opinion, but like, if you go back and watch, Bride of Chucky, Bride of Chucky definitely doesn't <laughs> hold up. It definitely okay. doesn't hold up. But not even just like genre wise, like there's something about that period of time where like everything was going super heavy on like CGI and story was becoming a little bit less important. And, uh, I don't know. I guess I'm just talking about Armageddon, if you think about it. Yeah. <laughs> so what's new? Yeah, it's, 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 I, I've, I've often wondered why, um, and I think, I think that might just be because when you're watching a movie as uh, a younger person, you just take different things out of the movie. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I don't... There's certain movies that I remember watching as a kid being like, oh, I love this movie. And now I watch it only because I loved it when I was a kid. I don't, yeah. I know that it's deeply flawed. Mm-hmm. Um, like Demolition Man. You know, I, I had a weird experience with, oh, Demolition Man. Did you say Demolition Man because I, I love that movie? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Demolition Man does hold up. Oh, okay. I beg to differ. <laughs> <laughs> <It does. laughs> There's nothing wrong with that film. I still haven't mastered and, uh, the three shells, so I'm, as soon as I figure that out, I'm going to be good to go. Yeah, I'll throw another one at you. Cliffhanger. Cliffhanger is awesome. Cliffhanger is legitimately scary. Like, the opening <laughs> scene of that movie is frightening. Yeah. It's really well done. Yeah. Um, uh, that, I mean, I, I don't... I'm trying to remember what... I believe the director was... You can Google it because you're in front of a uh, computer, but I believe it's Rennie Harlan. Okay. If I'm not mistaken. And I'm trying to remember what else he did. I think he did a movie um, like 10 years ago with Val Kilmer and Christian Slater. Hmm. Oh. I can't okay. remember what else he, he directed. Anyway. We'll look it um, up. I had an interesting yeah. experience of rewatching Boondock Saints recently. Okay. okay. Yeah. And I, I definitely had a very different perspective of the film. When I was a child. Okay. Okay. Continue. Have you guys have you guys rewatched that recently? I haven't rewatched it. Not a re not a rewatch. It's been a bit. Yeah. It's been a bit. Yeah, it's been a while. I think I rewatched it because I heard that they're making a um a television show of it. Okay. I think. I forget where I heard that from. Um, but yeah, I was rewatching it, and it's not it's not the same movie as you think it is. Hmm. Different. Does it like kind of bum you out? Does it kind of bum you out like going back and watching it and just like not feeling the same about a movie that you really like? I, you know what? I don't know because I can't tell if it's if the movie was the movie and just my taste has changed. Yeah. Because like for instance, um, one of my favorite movies of all time is uh, Five Easy Pieces, and when I first watched Five Easy Pieces, I don't know if you guys have seen it. Um, mm-hmm. But the ending is like heartbreaking in a in a very very bleak way, mm-hmm. and uh, I remember when I watched it. And when I was eighteen, I watched it, and I I couldn't have hated the film more. Like I hated it, hated it, hated it, hated it. And um, I was like, some time went by, and I grew up, you know, and became an adult, and I it's become one of my favorite movies ever. And I think because I understand the film now, whereas yeah. like before I, I was so viscerally hurt by the main character's decision at the end mm-hmm. that I just couldn't, couldn't possibly like the movie because I, I felt betrayed. Um, and now it's like I'm, I'm an adult and I look at it like, oh my God, what a, what a tortured Flabby. individual. Yeah. And this is just sad. It's really um, interesting that you say that because like I had this conversation once with my dad about American Beauty. Um, and he used to be like, my dad would say things like, I really love that movie because I completely understand Kevin Spacey and I oh can completely boy. relate to him. And I, and I cool, used to, dad. well, I don't, <laughs> I guess <laughs> I think from the sense of like, 
you know, suburban dad going nowhere, like looking right. for a way out. And like, I couldn't relate to it at the time. I, I, I had the same reaction Jake just had, which was like, what the fuck do you mean? <laughs> yeah. You can relate to Kevin Spacey in that movie. Um, but like, there's certain movies that you watch. And like, I've had this conversation a lot about like Donnie Darko and Fight Club. Garden State. And movies Garden that were like, changed your life when you saw them at that age. But right. in retrospect, maybe don't do the same thing for you that they yeah. did when you watched Like, I, I still really like Fight Club. But when I go back and watch Donnie Darko now, I'm like, I don't, this isn't hitting me the way it did at one time. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's, there's movies like that for me. I think, I think pretty collectively everyone initially loved the movie Crash. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then after yeah. they like, after they sat with the movie for a while, kind of thought differently. You know? I feel like that happens a lot with these Oscar movies. Like these movies get so much buzz and so much hype. And it's like, you wonder like, do I really like this movie or am I just like becoming a collective part of like, people get caught up. People get caught up in, in just the hype of it. Right. And they're just like, yeah, this, movie's, well, I, this I mean, movie's good because everybody says it's good. Well, not only that, but I mean, you know, there's, there's also sometimes where people just like the spirit of a movie. Yeah. Um, for instance, you know, I've been in, um, so I made this, this short that's been going to festivals, and uh, a friend of mine really liked a film that was in the same short block as mine, and I couldn't figure out why, because I, 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 I thought, and I'm not going to name it, because it's just mean, but I thought it was awful. <laughs> and uh, We name I, names it, here. It, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, it's... But and I also don't want to be discouraging to other people who are trying to make their art. That's, right. That's right. But yes, um, I support that. But the uh, the point of it is, is that everything that I had problems with it in terms of like execution, he voluntarily ignored. Whether he, I mean, he, he voluntarily ignored it, whether he was conscious of it or not, because he was so happy to see a storytelling that specific sect of life. Gotcha. That yeah. He enjoyed the fact that the, the spirit of the, of, of the fact that the film was actually made. And um, I don't necessarily think, and, and, and when I, I started to recognize that, I think I realized that um, that's not necessarily, he's not a minority there. You know, I think sometimes people really connect with a certain type of message and it allows them to enjoy a movie that, may have flaws. Um, yeah. and I don't, I don't know if there's no, there's anything really wrong with that. I mean, I, <laughs> I still love watching the labyrinth <laughs> you know what I mean? because as a kid, it just made my imagination go, you know what I mean? It's but it's not, you know, too, not like yeah. it's, yeah, I mean, I think it's not there's going all... into the, yeah, there, ahead, there's no, well, there's films like that you just connect with at a certain age that just like, but like there's the B movie that you love, like it's an A, like kind of. And then like, if you ever get in that situation where you're trying to like introduce a movie to somebody who's never seen it and mm -hmm. it means a lot to you and you, but you kind of got it. Like whenever I'm talking about point break, if somebody's never seen point break, I have to go in with the understanding, like, listen, you're probably not going to get out of this what I've you're not gotten out of it. Treasure it, it the way that I like. Am. I've been in love with Point Break since sitting in a theater as a child and watching it in 1991. Like, so 2018 person is going to be like, "Oh, this is something," <laughs> you know? <laughs> Were you kind of sad that they remade it as like a big Point Break fan? Um. Okay, so we because we're a Ghostbusters podcast too, we talk a lot about remakes and reboots and, oh, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> uh, the origin of our podcast. Yeah. The Ghostbusters. Uh, so was I sad? I wasn't sad that they remade it, but I was sad that it was so awful and it looked like they didn't really try. Because I kind of, like to me, Fast and the Furious is a much better remake of Point Break than the Point Break remake. Because Fast and the Furious, the first one, is almost beat for beat the exact same I can story. See that. I like can see that. undercover FBI agent gets gets in a little too close with the brotherhood of the, you know, the criminals who are also into this extreme sport and all of it's completely unrealistic. Mm -hmm. Um but the point break remake was like it looked like I know this is a cliche thing and a lot of the reviews said this, but it quite literally looked like an hour and a half GoPro like advertisement. Yeah. So yeah, I think I think um, 
I think you're kind of talking about like the spirit of a film again, huh? Yeah, like, and that's what it is. Like it's it, it's like obviously the movie point it missed break. on the spirit of what made the original. Yeah, uh, exactly. It resonate with you, which for me, Point Break has great characters and great lines, a lot of humor. Um, and yeah, it's it's one of my favorites for those reasons. And uh, I just I fucking love who plays Tyler. Oh. Lori Petty. Lori, she's amazing. In yeah, movie, so. she's awesome. Oh yeah, she's great. Tank Girl. Tank Girl. Yeah, fucking yes. Yep. We like Tank Girl. Already. But 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 when you get into the um, to the discussion of like reboots and remakes, like all of us were like, uh, I don't know how the, the Ghostbusters reboot was uh, heavily criticized before ever being released, and all of us were like. We're very positive and very optimistic. Like, look, give it a chance, give it a chance. And then upon arrival, I think it was missing the spirit, like you said, of the original. It didn't it didn't Which have an appropriate word for Ghostbusters. Well, right, yeah. yes. It was missing the ghost movie was missing <laughs> the spirit. Uh God, I hope some uh movie critic used that in his uh in his review. I don't know, but it didn't it didn't have whatever that X factor was that made the original special. But like it had a lot of the same factors. It had, you know, uh, improv based comedians who are at the top of their game and, and a comedy director who's doing some of the, you know, who's becoming prolific and doing all this, having all this success. But for me and us, I don't want to speak for the group. It, it just didn't work the way maybe it could have. Um, so, yeah. Was, I mean, when you think about the original Ghostbusters, do you consider it a comedy? God, we're about to get into the, uh, okay. I think Ghostbusters as a concept works best where comedy is like one third of the equation. Right. I, th- I think as, I think as a kid, cause I'm not positive that they went into it thinking that they were, that it was like a animal house type comedy. No, for sure. And it doesn't feel like that at all. It just they, feel, it feels, it feels like, a, exactly. Yes. It just has, it, it's, it's taken seriously. It just happens to have characters that are funny. In right. It. It's sort of like uh, a good way of describing the movie, in my opinion. It's sort of like the Dirty Dozen of Geeks. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. and mm-hmm. Paranormal. It's just like they found something that they have, you know? I don't know. Yeah. Like they're really, like, they're really effing cool. Yes. It's yeah. like a ragtag group against the odds, like the underdog type of thing. And they're cool as fuck. Like, yeah. Obviously. Yeah. And I think the, the problem with the new movie is like a lot of the, 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 the stuff that works in the original, as far as like the dynamics between the group and like the relationships that just exist on screen and you just accept them as you're introduced to them in the new one, it was a lot of beating you over the head. Like this is why you should like this character. Listen to this quirky thing she just said. And this is why it's they're telling, not showing. Yeah. It was, yeah. A, it was a lot of, uh, it's just the, the movie just feels off to me, but, um, I yeah. haven't seen it, so I can't comment on it. Yeah. Um, but I, I do, I do wonder when we're going to start remaking movies that should actually get remade. Meaning, yeah, that were right the first time. Mm-hmm. So you, you like, you know, like when 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 we start remaking films that were great and perfect um, the first time, there's going to be no way to really make anyone happy. Yeah, there's think. no point. There's no point. If if you're going to do something like that and you want to reimagine it, don't call it a remake just sort of rip off the idea a little bit you know that's the, that's what i think but um there's certain movies that i think weren't great even from our childhood that should totally get remade um because of just what we can do now and just how we can and how times have changed to really elevate drunk and no one would be offended by remaking it i think like know? the judge dread the new one is like a good example of like Hey, this was a cool concept yeah. that didn't really work the first time, and look, now it works. Exactly. Um, yeah, that's a that's a really good example. I'm trying to think of other examples. Like, there's definitely movies, but then like, but it feels like what they're doing is just they're going and they're they're assessing every possible property and and just just doing it again, whether you know, or not it's just weird. I I listened to this thing on NPR. Um, I want to say last year, they did a special on um, the world market and how there is a lot of um, R&D being spent on how to figure out how to make a global audience for a film. And I think that we're, and, you know, it's 
uh, with humility, because I'm sure there's tons of people who would listen to what I'm saying and going, this asshole doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. <laughs> but I think we're... We're used to that. I think we have time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I meant about you guys, not me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> fucking assholes. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, that we're at a time with, with, with film uh, where studios want, I assume, to make sure that the money that they're spending is getting made back. I mean, they're a business. That makes sense, right? That's right. not hard to, like, grasp. Right. But mm-hmm. they're trying to figure out how not just America can love a movie, but how the entire world can connect to it, which, you know, I mean, I'll finish what I'm saying, but just a sidebar, sounds absolutely egregious and ridiculous and silly because that's the whole fucking purpose of art, right? This is that. It right, it's not for everybody. Different. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, it's not necessarily for everybody. In fact, if you don't like it, it's kind of what brings us together. Case in point, if you go to a museum and we're looking at a dolly painting and one person is like, I don't get it, and the other person is standing right next to us is like, oh, you don't like the colors here? Or, you know, you're not getting this weird yeah. psychedelic expression of how time and like, you know, et cetera, et cetera, uh, or whatever their theory is on, on whatever they're looking at. It creates a conversation. And, you know, the... The, the point of art on, on, on a lot of levels is to like sort of shed light on a, on a different perspective and to be expressive about something that, you know, specific to whatever the, art, the artist or artists who are involved are seeing and trying to, and trying to you know, pinpoint or, or nudge or poke at or ask a question about. And so it seems counterintuitive to have like this global market where everyone can enjoy it the other side is it's like wouldn't it be great if the whole world could actually agree on one thing if it's a movie yeah. i mean yeah. well, i guess <laughs> i guess <laughs> i guess that's pretty cool that's like, uh, and yeah. i think that that's the reason why we're having an insurgence of more and more um you know comic book films and films that are remakes and because there is a there's an audience there and right. it's proven and the r&d is is there it's just you got to go to a comic book store um, yeah, it's interesting and, too, though, because like, there's so many people that like on paper, yeah, it's like okay, Avengers is like the biggest movie ever, and everybody loves it. But there's tons of people who don't, or like when the new Star Wars movie comes out, and it's like, like uh, what was the, the Solo bombed in China or whatever, and it's like, I bet. You're right. They're probably spending a ton of time and money trying to figure out why it doesn't work in China. But that's when you really start getting away from the art because if yes. if the process becomes how do we make this work or on make a, this more like Avengers because that was successful and you see that in some movies. Well, like answer well, the you call. start looking at effect yeah. opposed to expression, right? And like, don't get me wrong. I think that it's 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 absolutely necessary to test a film and see whether or not the movie was tracking in the way in which you did it. For instance, um, I just, I just made another, um, short recently and there in the first round of like, just like showing it to people and getting what people, uh, getting people's thoughts. There was a whole aspect of the story that people didn't catch on to. That's good to know, you know? So like testing is definitely worth it. But when you start creating based off of the, the spreadsheet, uh, I don't know how productive that is. Now, having said that, I mean, Logan was one of the greatest films last year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I watched that movie and cried. I cried numerous <laughs> times. Jake took yeah. a crying selfie and sent it to me. Yeah, I did. <laughs> so. It was, it was, it, I would argue that that might be, that's definitely top two greatest, like, comic book films ever for, yeah. for, him, for my money. And, in terms of like superheroes, you know, and um, I think it's like I think it's <laughs> probably like Dark Knight and and Logan are like the top two. I would and agree. Then, I mean, I would just agree. I with throw that. Guardians of the Galaxy in there, and then I'd agree. <laughs> I mean, I just like I, you know that that movie was just so much more than just a comic book movie, and I, I would also argue. I, I uh, this is a bold statement, but I'm just gonna say it. Screw it. I think that Hugh Jackman is probably give gave the greatest comic book superhero character performance ever. Um, I don't think that there's anyone who nails Wolverine like he did, um, and I don't think that there ever will be. 
to be yeah. honest. And what's cool about him, like, he was so freaking good. It was really good. And, like, he evolved. Like, I mean, he was always good, but, like, Logan's another level. Yeah. That's one of those things where he learned with that character. You know, like, he didn't really know what he was getting into, I don't think, when he when he signed up for X-Men, however many years ago that was at this point. But he, his acting abilities and his also, like, his love for that character, it did nothing but, like, evolve until it reached, the, you know, that point. And that, mo- that movie is fucking amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he and, yeah. and honestly, he was great in the first X Men. Like he was great. Everyone that was one of the things that everyone said it was like, oh my god, they nailed Wolverine. Perfectly. Yeah, and he was nobody knew who he was back then. I remember it was like everyone was like, this guy's gonna be Wolverine. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> but Logan is you're, you're you couldn't be more right. Another level. Like he like he literally under like every ounce of that character was understood by him. Yeah, so cool. Yeah, and her rating, I think, helped with that a lot, too, with that film being so close to the way the the actual character is. For sure. Yeah. I also like the fact that it wasn't just... It's like it's a father-daughter movie. On some level, it's like a a father-son movie with an aging parent. Yes. It's a revenge film. It's like it's a film about... A guy who, like, I admit, and I personally love types of films where where you have like the old, the old like veteran, you know, and there's the new guy on the block, and he, and he has to win. And it's like, does he still got it? And it has right. that element to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then when he shoots himself in the neck and then just starts destroying people, it's awesome. <laughs> it is awesome. <laughs> like that scene. I, like, like literally screamed. <laughs> like, <laughs> we, there's a lot of but moments. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fuck you. You're like you're at the theater just shaking the person next to you like a complete stranger. Um yeah. yeah, no, and like Patrick Stewart is awesome in that movie. Like you and what I like you don't even have to be well versed. Like what I think is perfect about that movie is like you could walk into that movie not knowing much about X-Men or the comics or the, the movie series and you're going to yeah, get... Yeah, I'm a prime example. I walked in and didn't know any of that shit but when Patrick Stewart starts like mumbling about Taco Bell or whatever <laughs> you're just like, oh my, you feel it. Right, It's so right. believable. Yeah, I think it's Patrick incredible. Stewart's going to do some good stuff in his career. Like, I think he's going places. <laughs> yeah, going places. <laughs> yeah, sometimes he's, he's got that it factor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> some would say. Yeah. <laughs> um... Uh, that, what, a, what an awesome career that guy's had, right? He's got to play some just epic characters. He really yeah. has, and he and I think like what what I love about somebody like Patrick Stewart uh, or even Hugh Jackman, uh, uh, for that matter, is they sometimes you you like I always get bummed out when you hear about Alec Guinness and how he kind of hated playing Obi Wan in Star Wars. Like I like when people have like a uh, uh, a reverence and an excitement for the character. Like yeah. when when you're reading this week that Patrick Stewart's probably coming back to play Picard in a new Star Trek series. Mm-hmm. Like God, yeah. I mean, I hope it's good. I hope it doesn't suck. But it's awesome that he wants to do it because he definitely yeah. doesn't yeah. have to. Yeah, I mean, when you think about how, ins- like, you know, when you essentially get to be a part, of, like, I I've never gotten to do this, but I I think about it is that when you've gotten to be a character that literally created a fandom that is so intense, now that, that character has so much responsibility. It's like to, to, to be a part of that has got to just be magical. I mean, he was one of how many captains of the Enterprise? Right. Not six, many. Kirk, five, yeah. six, yeah. Kirk, yeah, there wasn't, there wasn't many, right? Right. Um, and then, and it's also interesting that like they were kind of against the eight ball when next generation started and like, uh, like people didn't expect it to be like, Oh, this is like better than the original series. Like yeah. Picard's the best captain. Like, I mean, I'm not a giant Star Trek fan, so maybe, maybe I'm saying something blasphemous, but no, I don't think you are. I'm, I'm not a huge, I'm not a huge, uh, Star Trek fan either, but you know, when I think about when they did this, the Star Trek movie, which I thought was, that was a reboot that I thought was really well done. Um, you know, Chris Pine, that's, that's the actor's name, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, think about, think about that. Like, getting to play Captain Kirk, that, that must have been so effing cool. Right, right. Yeah, because it's like, where we are right now in 2018, you're only the second person to do it. 
Five hundred years from yeah, now, it's maybe exactly. there'll be and forty it, Kirks, but like right now, yeah, <laughs> you're number two. That you're yeah, but in, in some sort of weird way, it's like the the fandom version of Henry the Eighth. You know what I mean? Like getting to play that, right? Yeah. No, uh, it yeah, is for sure. Because did like not, Han Solo? Like that's a cool way to look at. So so cool. Yeah, and because of Han Solo and because of our love for Star Wars, we've had this discussion a lot lately about trying to take a step back and realize that these characters are going to go on a lot longer than the actors that portrayed them. We just like the, the medium of film has been around like what a hundred years or something like that. Like we don't have enough yeah, time. Hundred and change. Yeah. We don't have enough time with it. I mean, shit sound started in like what? The, the, right around the thirties. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, it, right. like, we haven't even had sound <laughs> in feature films for a hundred years. Right, right. So we don't have enough, like, who knows, like, hope the world exists in 500 years. Like, it probably <laughs> won't. But uh, assuming... Well, I mean, look, I'll put you this way. It's sort of like looking at it like James Bond, right? Right. Yeah. Um, now, I'll never probably ever get cast as James Bond because I'm not British. If I ever did, that would be so freaking cool. Right, exactly. <laughs> you know, you have to take that. It's James freaking Bond. You know what's we're funny, starting that, We're starting that hashtag. Yeah. 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 Trevor for James Trevor Bond. Trevor for Bond. Uh, it's yeah, funny. Trevor for James Bond. Yeah, <laughs> you know what's interesting? I have those same thoughts, too, but it's different for me because I'm not an actor. Like, but I sit... <laughs> like, I'll, I'm falling asleep at night and I'm going, man, if they would just... If only I could just be the new Spock. Chance. Like if only you can play Lando Calrissian. Yeah, if only. <laughs> yes, you know if they would just if they could just figure it out that I got the goods, um, I would be willing to to fall on the sword and be the next um, Gates McFadden. <laughs> just, just say it. the next Counselor Troy. Yeah, her. Did you say Caster Troy? Yeah. Are we, t- yeah, are we talking mean, about Face Off now? You're, you're not wrong that, that it'll just continue to uh, more and more people will get to play like Han Solo. and. Yeah. There's going to be a time in like 300 years where people are like, no, I mean, objectively, Harrison Ford was the third best Han Solo. <laughs> like, oh, shit. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's so crazy to think about, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. Considering oh, wow. the fact that he's like so obviously – one of the coolest humans ever for having yeah. gotten to do that. Yeah. Right. yeah. It's, and I think, I don't know, we don't have to go down the solo rabbit hole, it's but I think dangerous hole. it's dangerous. Um, but, or we don't have to go down the last Jedi rabbit hole either. It's been a, it's nah. been a weird year. It's been a weird year. Uh, but as long as we got puppet master, we're going to be good. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. We're going to be so good. We're going to be so good. Um, because there's more coming. There's more coming. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> Trevor, I got to ask you, and here comes all the annoying, qu- now that we got all the fun stuff out of the way, here comes the part where you can just mentally check out and just go, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. That wasn't when I answered the phone. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> when I was like, Hey man, we're having technical difficulties. You're like, God damn it. Um, so, okay. You're, you're part of a, of what I would consider. I, for, for my money, I think right now you can call Jurassic Park like the second great American franchise behind Star Wars and forgetting all the Marvel movies. Yeah. And Batman. Gotcha. So top five. <laughs> top yeah. five. And Jaws. And yeah. Oh, fuck. It's- Should we talk about Jaws? Um, no, Jurassic Park, like, uh, we were, I kind of had this realization, like, recently, like, Jurassic Park, just as a franchise is much bigger than Ghostbusters. I never used to think that. And I mean, that's kind of a it weird, is for sure. but yeah. it's, it's huge. Like these movies are like giant and people really seem to still, what did you say? It made a billion dollars already. It's what close to a billion dollars. Yeah. 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 After a couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, so what, so let's see what, what year did the, when you were in Jurassic park three, what year did that film? 2000? Um, let's see here. Came out uh, in 01, so. Gotta, you never said anything about math. Um, <laughs> I think what you I got was, stressed. The, I, I turned 14 while we were filming. Okay. And I'm 31 now. Okay. So. And did Sam yeah, Neill come out of a cake or anything for you? <laughs> yeah, wow, it's like you were there. Um, <laughs> no, no, but it was it was pretty cool. The, um, like they gave me cake and then... Uh, 
bunch of people got me like gifts and um I play guitar and at the time I was really I was really convinced that I was a a black blues musician. Okay. Uh, oh cool. Um, I've gone through that phase. So I got tons of box sets for like old like blues anthologies. Um and then I also got to go uh see BB King live at his restaurant at City Walk. I oh, got wow. to meet him. They like they uh I forget how it happened, who pulled the strings, but they were able to, like, get me not only a place to see it, but also get to go up and shake his hand. So, you know, if, if, if it wasn't fantastic enough of a birthday that I got to spend it on <laughs> the set where, you know, there's dinosaurs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you're like, living in, like, I this childhood <laughs> dream. Uh, did you, did I you also see... got to be one of the greatest musicians he's ever That's amazing. Played. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. I'm picturing, like, I'm picturing you, like, feeding some cake to the Spinosaur or animatronic. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would have been doing. Yeah. Just doing a little, like, just sharing in the birthday. Uh, Ruining the animatronic. They're like, hey, <laughs> stop putting <laughs> food in there. My source was on a low carb diet at the time. Oh he was ahead of his Atkins time. Was yeah, he was. Uh, was really big. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> so were you? Um, so obviously you'd been acting. I'm trying to kind of get the timeline. You'd been acting. You'd done a couple big movies already. So by the time Jurassic Park rolls around, that's like you had done Sixth Sense and you had done The Patriot already. Is that correct? Or The Patriot? Yeah, Patriot was before Jurassic. Yeah. Park. So. So, Patriot was before Jurassic. So, um, I had, it's kind of like a weird story how I ended up getting the role. Um, you know, I had worked with Kathleen Kennedy um, and Frank Marshall on The Sixth Sense, right? And then, uh, and the, uh, the only reason why I think I was a part of the film is because um, Knight and his wife were really big fans of ER. Okay. At the yeah. time, and I was on a season where I was playing a, playing a cancer kid who eventually ends up dying. So I was on the season of ER and, um, spoilers, uh, which is why I ended up, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Spoiler alert for people who are like 20 years too late on getting in the old ER. Yeah. <laughs> to anybody who's only on season three of ER, we just, we just fucked you We're over. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, feel free to buy more box sets, uh, residual. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, no. So anyway, um, that was just partly reason why I like I had like really short hair in, in the sixth sense is because I I like I had no hair I shaved my head for it. Gotcha. But anyway, I, I digress. Anyway, so uh, I do the sixth sense, and then I ended up doing this movie with um, Vanessa Redgrave and Ray Liotta in up in Canada, and uh, that's when I found out I got the Patriot. And when I did the Patriot, um, I guess. Steven Spielberg was a really big fan of the movie. Okay. Okay. Um, and uh, shortly after I did The Patriot, it was premiering when I was doing this movie called The Glass House. And uh, I was filming that. And during that time, right, I was auditioning for Jurassic Park 3. And uh, the, the AI was being filmed at the time. And that we, the, at one point, they were using a water tank at uh, Sony, which is where we were shooting the glass house. And because I knew Haley and we were buddies, um, I went to go visit him. And I met, it was, it was very strange. Like they just pulled back this curtain that was in front of the monitors, and there's Steven Spielberg. Um, wow. So it was like meeting the Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Right. It was yeah. just like, whoa. Um, that makes sense. And. Yeah, and he and he went on, and like one of the first things he said to me I was like, "Man, I really love the Patriot. He must have killed like thirty people in that movie." <laughs> it was it was totally only four, but yeah, no, I did yeah, all three of them. Um, and he was a big fan, and it just like is, I guess it was just I got really lucky. I think just a lot of different factors just all came together, and um, I ended up, you know, getting it. Uh, and for a while, I didn't even think I was going to be able to do it because I was on this one. I was on the glass house, and it just so happened that everything just worked out perfectly. So, um, yeah, I did the Patriot beforehand, um, and then I 
spent six months working on Jurassic Park 3. The first two months were in Hawaii, which is really funny because I only worked like three or four days while I was in Hawaii, but I was there for the full two months. So it's literally like, it's, it's sort of like, in the weirdest way, like this sounds like really trite, but it's like dreams come true. <laughs> right. Because, you know, as a kid, you couldn't be a part of something more cool than Jurassic Park, at least in my mind. Yeah, um, Dude, that's such a weird like, just just trying just trying to like wrap my head around like what it would be like to be, I don't know like thirteen or fourteen or whatever, and for Steven Spielberg to just be like, hey, I like you, you were cool in that thing. Like that just that seems like like a mind blowing experience to have. Yeah, it was. It was. I'm I'm very grateful. Um, I wish he'd do that, you know, now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, come, come on, on. come on, Steven. Hey, hey, uh, I can play. You know, you made that movie work. I can play horse. <laughs> yeah, I can play a horse. <laughs> I mean, a horse. Be a great horse. Yeah, like that movie, The Post. There's like a hundred journalists. Like I can be a journalist. Come on, dude. Yeah, I can write. <laughs> 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 what do you mean to do? You mean like uh, go get on the typewriter? Yeah, I can do that. I can do that. Over here. I mean, look at me. Look at me writing this story. Hello. Yeah. Um. Hey, 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 I'm reporting. <laughs> <laughs> reporting. I'm reporting for duty. So, we're, that's, so that's yeah. That's what reporters do. They just constantly say, I'm reporting. I'm reporting. It's not only the fact that it's Steven yeah, Spielberg. Yeah, I mean, I saw, I saw Jurassic Park in the theaters with my father opening weekend. Right. Okay, yeah, so you're right there. You know. Um, so, I mean, I, I'm not lying when I say, like, it literally could not have been a cooler thing for me to have been a part of. Right. You know? So how often, like, okay, so between The Patriot, Sixth Sense, and Jurassic Park 3, like, these are movies that, like, they're on a lot. Like, at any given time, these movies are on TV. Like, are people, like, but now you're kind of doing your own thing, and you're like, we didn't really talk about it, but it sounds like you're writing and directing your own shorts now. Uh, yeah, I just... I just finished up this this last one, um, and we're we're in post on it at the moment. Um, the first, I made one uh, that's still festing right now. Festing, it sounds like such a douche. No, uh, it's going to festivals right now. Um, and uh, you know, I I wrote this uh, feature that I want to make this year, um, and uh, I'm also developing this uh, this documentary that is on journalism, um, but not so much journalism, the history of journalism, and but also like, you know, the laws in which we have the journalism that we have today, so like all, okay. the, all the major events, but but really, you know, that's, that's, that's sort of like the, the literal explanation, but philosophically it's more so about how in which we communicate. I mean, our, our journalism has completely evolved to the point where now... Um, you know, people are reporters on their Twitter account and yeah. how in which we access what is truth um, and what that means uh, in terms of objectivity and perspective, just even socially, the social dynamics of right. the world that we live in today. That's cool. Yeah. So, That's cool. Uh, I mean, it's cool that you, you have yeah. the opportunity to, to do, I mean, these sound, this sounds like something you're pretty passionate about. So it's awesome that you're like, I've got shit that I'm passionate about, but I, I got to be up at seven and go work for the man tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you you are doing something that you're passionate about. I mean, oh right, hey. hi. Yeah. By the way, yes, I have you some podcasts. I mean, on there. Um, do you? Um, so, but I guess the point I was trying to get to, like, does the does the experience of working on something like Jurassic Park, like, does it feel like a lifetime ago, or does it feel like can you access those memories and be like put yourself right there? Uh, immediately, or does it just feel like a completely like Seven like times. a surreal experience that doesn't even feel real? Um, you know, I think I think it's a, a complicated answer because on some level it's like it was twenty years ago, right? Uh -huh. Um, or getting close to, uh, and then on another level it does sort of feel like wow, what a cool like think about how, how fantastic. That is, I'm not trying to, you know, um, inflate myself here, but like that was no. a really no, we all cool agree. thing. Yeah. That I got. I, when I go see Jurassic Park, I say the same yeah, thing. We're all still I'm like, jealous. that was 
think about how great that was for us yeah. that we got to see the movie. Like you were fucking in it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like it's it's like it's it it just seems so. I just feel really lucky and blessed that I got to have that um, experience. Uh, and also, just some of the stuff that I got to do was just really effing cool. Like I got to do a lot of stunts on it. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, wire work. I mean. Once again, as like a thirteen-year-old kid, like, wait, I need to—I get to be up in the air in on mm-hmm. wires as this like animatronic dinosaur is holding onto my shoulders, and I gotta like that's <laughs> sure. You just described what Jake dreamed about last night. Yeah, he's still <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That had to be like that had to be like when you watch when you go back and watch all the Jurassic Park movies, you see all the. You know, the first Jurassic Park was like one of the big things was was its use of animatronics and kind of how that was a bit of like a breakthrough. And something that I noticed when I watched the third is that I feel I don't know if this is true, but I feel like Jurassic Park three probably has more animatronic dinosaurs in it than like any of the others. Like, in, I mean, including Jurassic Park and definitely including you know, the, the newer, the Jurassic world films, but like that alone had to be like working. Like, did you get to like, like have one-on-one stuff with like Stan Winston? Was he there like on set working with him? Uh, yes, 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 I did. Um, Stan Winston was, you know, a genius. (laughs) Yeah. And he has been a part of making some of the coolest creatures ever. Uh, Mm -hmm. So that was really cool. They, you know, I got to work with a lot of his um, people who were his trusted, you know, individuals just under right. him a lot because those are the people who are in charge of, like, making certain things work and operate properly. Um, it was it was really cool. They, you know, quite often it was not a rare thing to have someone come up to a dinosaur with a thing of KY. And okay. just put KY all over the dinosaur. Um, and then it's not abnormal for Jake to do the exact same thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, different motivations. <laughs> uh, we all tried it. They would, they would put KY on the dinosaurs uh, in order to, because I guess the way in which KY reacted with the uh, the material that they made, like the dinosaur skin, is the similar to like when they put glycerin on actors to make it look like they're consistently perspiring. Right. right. So, uh, yeah. Uh, yes. I mean, it was also, you know, it was rumored for a really long time that he was going to direct the fourth one, Stan Winston. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Wow. Well, yeah, we just did a, um, we did an episode a couple weeks ago where there's like a script for a fourth Jurassic Park movie floating around that leaked, you know, years ago. Uh, and we cut, we did a review of it. Um, it's pretty batshit crazy. Like just some, but I, like any ideas for these movies, like I'm sure they throw a lot against the wall and like, it all sounds crazy because it's dinosaurs. I mean, it's about dinosaurs living today with people. I mean, right, know, right. A big imaginative idea. Yeah. yeah. Were you, um, there's, there's like kind of long been talk that the production was kind of troubled going into Jurassic Park three and they were kind of like writing the script uh, as, they went. as they went or at least making major changes. Um, a, is that true? And B, if it is like, is that stressful as an actor or are you just kind of like just going with it? I, I was living the dream. There was nothing stressful for me on that, that job. Um, the, were, were they writing the script and were they, constantly doing rewrites and changes yes but i'm not so positive that 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 it was any different than other productions uh of that magnitude i I don't know i wouldn't be able to really tell but i i I don't know how not normal it was right um you know there's so much i mean to me it was you know yeah, I mean, it's a I major... you got to show up. Yeah, all right, exactly. <laughs> you're like 14, you're like, um, I don't know if you saw me on ER, but... Uh, what's, what's my motivation? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, I get it's it. Like, it. Don't get eaten. It's don't get t- eaten and uh, <laughs> right. hit your mark. Right. And it's funny, like, we reach, like, we, we, uh, we, we love our listeners, and we reached out and said, listen, we're going to have you on the podcast. 
you know, any questions you have about Jurassic Park 3 that you've always wanted to know. And like eight people in a row are just talking about T-Rex piss. And we're like, come on, guys. <laughs> yeah. There's got to be more. That's that's the question they want to yeah, know. That's the one. You don't want to know. You don't yeah. want to know. Yeah, I was going to say, so having said so, that, like, how'd you get it or whatever? <laughs> was the KY involved? Um, so... <laughs> Yikes. Yeah, I'm sorry. We've crossed so many lines already. Um, so, like, I guess the point I was trying to get to earlier was, like, as you kind of, as that becomes, like, further away, like, in your career, are you, like, how often are people, like, hitting you up to talk about those specific movies from, from that time in your career? Um, um, I mean, there's you three who want to talk to me about JP3. <laughs> and you know uh, I mean I've, I have gotten a few requests for uh, Jurassic Park podcasts um, and especially recently just because the new movie's coming out oh, yeah. um, or came out but I you know uh, you know no one more than me just kidding um, <laughs> you know <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, no, I mean, every once in a while, what will happen is, is, uh, someone will tell me some sort of anecdote or, or, or story about how, you know, one of the movies I was in, uh, they remember seeing, um, when it came out, like, for instance, I, I've gotten a lot of like, the Patriot was the first VHS movie I ever bought, you know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I like, it's like, what are you supposed to do with that information? Yeah, like, give him a hug. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. No, uh, I mean, it's it's like it, it's 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 endearing. I guess. Yeah. I mean, it, I don't I don't get offended offended or anything. No, right. I mean that's good. But like, weren't you like just looking back at some of like the old video clips? Like, and I'm just putting it out there. You were like. Uh, heartthrob status weren't you yeah like oh, we had a friend reach out to us today and was like on our facebook group saying that yeah. she was like oh my god that's like my he's my dream always yeah. was yeah. H- hook it up i think the quote was so fun uh yeah i don't I, I don't i don't think i ever was i mean i was never uh, yeah i never was a part of like the tiger beat stuff okay that really got people a lot of the the girls Man. Um, yeah, I had a couple. Of you know, I never really I had that type of heartthrob type of thing. But to be honest, I never really became that famous. Like, you know, when you look at like, I mean, not that I'm comparing myself to Bieber because we're obviously two different. But I mean, like, when you that to me is like insane type of celebrity. Yeah. You know, I kind of flew under the radar, um, which I'm not. I'm not uh, sad about. You know? Yeah. You landed in a few hearts, cool. though, so I can tell you well, that. Well, I think also, like, you did... It's not like you were just on some sitcom. Like, yeah. you were doing legit... Like, these are movies that are really important to people that, like, like people have a lot of reverence for. Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, I gotta, I gotta be honest. It's, it, it, like, really kind of because I never got, um, like, insanely famous, uh, <laughs> it's, it's allowed me to play roles that I don't think I necessarily would have gotten. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, because there was no, there was no way of uh, framing me with a certain thing. Like there, it's not like I became so famous for this. You know, I ima- like I obviously. Uh, I mean, I can't speak for for uh, you know like Miley Cyrus, but I imagine that like when she was doing her show and she was trying to make the jump, I bet that was probably slightly difficult. And now she can do anything she wants. She's obviously gotten through it. Right. Um, I've never had any of that struggle, I guess. I, mean, I, mean, I can't tell if I'm being clear right now. There's no kind of like um, typecasting. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Like I never had to like overcome like you yeah. know, any type of like child stars. Like because right. I was never a star. So it's it not like kind of that worked you're out incredibly balanced and grounded though. Maybe as a result in some yeah, ways. Yeah. I mean, like, it's not like a very I, normal human. Maybe like if after Jurassic Park three, you did like a whole run of like straight to DVD dinosaur movies and you just became like dinosaur kid. <laughs> I wish you did. I kind of, yeah, I kind of wish that would have actually dinosaur happened. <laughs> that would have been amazing. Well, thanks. 
<laughs> but what I'm saying is you did I like I wish you would have become like Dino Kid <laughs> like, You were Dino you? Kid Listen Here's the thing No I mean I, I think it's cool because like I don't know It's not something I can relate to Like you, These are Like I said These are movies that people Hold very close to their heart Like you know Even though like Like If you're a fan of Jurassic Park Like You love Jurassic Park Like we had this Whole conversation the other day Like Abby Dude, I think I ranked Jurassic Park 3 above um, uh, Lost... Well, above, above Lost World and probably also Jurassic World for, like, enjoyment level. Because, like, we were talking earlier, it's one of those movies that I know it's not perfect, but I, I, I love watching it. It makes me happy. Yeah, but... I'm not lying. Yeah, you we know, in week. a weird way, I think um, there was a... There was a um, collective... What is the what's the word I'm looking for? There was a collective understanding and motivation of wanting it to be better than the second film, mm-hmm. um, because I believe, if I remember correctly, the second film wasn't too well received. Um, yeah, like it still made a lot of money. It's still very enjoyable. People, like I'm not, I'm not saying anything about it um, negative, uh, but they wanted it to save the series in some way. And at the time, I, I seem to remember people really, really enjoying it. Um, and then I, I don't know if that's changed or not. I don't really know. I don't regularly go on blogs and see what people are thinking about the film I did when I was 13. Yeah. Um, because I... that just paints a very sad picture about <laughs> what that's <thing> about me. <laughs> that's what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> No, I mean, I think uh, I think a lot of times with a movie like that, when it, when it's part of a franchise, it's like how it's received in the moment is so much different than how it's looked upon like much later, and um, and you see a lot. Yeah, I, I think I seem to have heard like some people. Um, someone was telling me that there was a uh, a trailer or something like that that was released that was like kind of hating on it, but I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I mean they. But I mean, it is what it is. They do that with yeah. like every movie has that. Everything like, gets that. Though, everything yeah. gets that treatment. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, exactly. I don't. I think I think Jurassic Park three has a few of the like, n- n- like I mean, just like the birdcage scene alone, like that whole that scene is fun. Like that is such a good the entire thing. Like it's terrifying. The the animatronics for the 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 pterodons are are absolutely like amazing in that scene and like the little babies and everything like there there are a few set pieces in scenes in that movie that i think are are you know at place with the t-rex breakout you know in the first film it's just as good it's got great actions yeah the spinosaurus i remember hearing joe johnson talk about um that whole scene when we're on the boat and then we get in the cage and we're underwater and it's the Spinosaurus and it's raining, which, by the way, that was fucking super fun to film. Dude, I um, bet. That sounds yeah. amazing. Oh, my God. It was so awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, and w- I remember him talking about, like, with the fin. Remember there's that shot of, like, over the water yeah. and you see, like, mm-hmm. the fin going towards the boat about how, like, his it was kind of his ode to Jaws. Yeah, for sure. And I was just, like, thinking to myself, like, as an adult now, I'm like that must have been really cool for him to just make that scene. Yeah, that. to just be like, oh, what's my favorite? Like, what's one of my favorite movies? I'm gonna put that in this movie. Right. Yeah, yes. that's what I would do. You know, yeah. you know, you think you talk about uh, you guys are, are big Star Wars fans. He invented the Ewok. Oh, oh. okay, that's interesting. <laughs> that is very. cool. I feel like yeah. I've heard something about this. Yeah, wow. he was the uh, he was the person to come up with that. God, we'll get him next week. Yeah. Um, well, it's also yeah, interesting. What are you doing talking to me? Just talk to that guy. Yeah. Talk to <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And our last question Can Do you we... have um, William H. Macy's phone number? Or... <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's just, it's all a, it's all a ruse. Uh, we're actually a Boogie yeah. Nights podcast. <laughs> yeah. We've never even seen Jurassic Park. Um, you know, there's, there's something that I, that I feel like, so. Being being like, however, you know, a kid when you're when you're in Jurassic Park, like me and Craig and Abby, like we're all collectors. Like we 
buy and collect toys like crazy. And Jurassic Park has like one of the best merchandise lines just like ever. There's so much stuff. And like I'm I'm sitting in my room here literally across from me on the shelf is a is a figure of you. Like what? How how yeah, weird George. is that? Yeah, in your little shorts, holding the, like, what is that like being, you know, a kid and not only being in Jurassic Park, but like, oh, hey, there's a figure of me. And it also that figure, I don't know, if J- Jake, if you have it, but that figure originally came with the uh, the Alpha Pterodon. Yeah. Which is fucking I, well, of awesome. Course I have. Yeah. <laughs> Jake, yeah. of course, Craig. <laughs> I know, my mom still has one in her, uh, in her closet. That's amazing. Uh, like that's got to be amazing. It, it was like I don't know. Like once again, it was the coolest thing ever. It's like I had, I could play with myself in a very <laughs> different way. Yeah. You know, like literally. <laughs> yeah. Hey, um, no joke. It's worth like sixty bucks. So if you, yeah, I mean, it's a good, it's a good figure. It, yeah. It's kind of rare now. So maybe if you can, so like, now, now's the time to dump all of the ones that I saved. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, now you can finance your next film selling your own action figure. That, that's a documentary that's I'm going to make. a good idea. <laughs> I'm going to buy the action Dude, figure. Dude, sign those. I'll buy one. <laughs> yeah. How many orders am I getting right now? Yeah. Well, <laughs> can you open this up? Can you open this up to your podcast listeners up? and see how yeah. many people Yes. Wanna... Here we go. Give Guys, it's a can you imagine? It's a can't miss deal. The Trevor Morgan signed Jurassic Park three action figure only available on Yes Have Some podcast for the low price of three payments of ninety nine ninety nine. It's going to a good cost. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, we have we have beautiful financing options for yes you. yes. We knew all. We'll just play the clips. Depending on credit availability. Uh-huh. Yeah right. Like who <laughs> who remembers this scene? Is just T. Leone screaming Eric at Eric! the top of the lungs. <laughs> Um, you come from a long line of divorced children in the Jurassic Park series. Like that's kind of a, a running theme. Like to enjoy the the dinosaurs, you, it's almost like a like a make a wish. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not like that. Funny, but, it's kind of funny, right? Because it's like you know, in this in in this world, uh, I guess the best thing that you can do is if you're not going to stay with the mother or father, is to put them in most certain danger yeah, <laughs> yeah. feed him just hey what do we hey we're getting a divorce what do we do with the kid we'll, we'll just feed him to a dinosaur yeah feed him to a dinosaur yeah let's take him to that dinosaur place they yeah love that. <laughs> it's like yeah maybe I heard, hey I heard we'll take him there like, <laughs> yeah may, may, maybe something will happen yeah <laughs> Uh, <laughs> their fault that we brought up. There's a small this. island off the, the coast of Costa Rica. I think it would be a great place for him to be. Um, before we before we wrap up, um, and Trevor, we really appreciate you spending time because we're we're almost at an hour and a half, and like it's awesome that you're taking time to to chat with us about this stuff because uh, t- not to get sappy, but this is the reason why we do this is to connect with people in sure. like in movies that we we love and like we still love to talk about yeah. after all this time so we really do appreciate it one of the first times yeah. that the oh, three no, of us ever hung out was to see jurassic world so this, yeah this yeah. is this is this has been fun i would do this even if this wasn't going to be a part of uh some sort of podcast just because uh i genuinely love talking about movies yeah um yeah. and i also love talking about you know, I mean, I guess it's sort of similar to people who, who want to have conversations about whether LeBron is better than Michael Jordan. Right. It's yeah. similar to that of like when we start talking about like who would be a really great Wolverine in 10 years. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Yeah. It's fun to spec- or, like speculate. Yeah, like which the top, top five movies that are – what did I do recently? We did, I, was, I was at a bar because um, I enjoy drinking. And I got, a, I got, a, uh, got into a conversation with someone. Uh, it was, I think it was a friend's birthday and, and, and I was in Los Angeles and I met someone and we started talking about like top five favorite documentaries of all time. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, anyway, I just enjoy talking about movies and stuff. So this has been fun. Dude, okay. we do too. If you ever want to come back on and we'll talk about whatever, it doesn't yeah. matter. If you're ever like, you got a topic or something that yeah. you think would be fun, you let us know and we'll do it. Yeah, because we were already going to uh, do yeah. our... Yeah, you know what? I, if, you're, if you're serious, I'll pick you up on that. Yeah, for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Because next week we're doing our top five favorite Revolutionary War movies. Yeah. And... Yeah. I, oh, cool. <laughs> yes. I, I, know, I know one. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but for real, we, we, we would absolutely love to have you on because, like, what we... we and 
we just love talking about movies. Like we, yeah. this, what you were talking about, like the speculation of like whether it's stuff in the past. Like we we've been contemplating doing an episode called Rebooting Jaws. We all know it's the worst idea of all time. Mm. Having said that, we want to have a two hour discussion about how it should be done. Because yeah. Sam Neill could be Quint, <laughs> and that's our that's our thought process. Oh yeah, that's a Jake's yeah. idea. That's one I think you just don't remake. I okay. don't think you remake that one. We, oh, you definitely yeah. don't. Oh, like you, you don't. Even... You don't. But we're gonna talk but about it. <laughs> unless, <laughs> unless, unless you want to cross pollinate it with a, a reboot of Point Break. Oh my wow. god. Wait. The outlaws are sharks. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. Um, okay. That would be amazing. Before we wrap up, I gotta yeah. ask. The opening scene of Jurassic Park 3 is epic. It's hang gliding. I'm assuming that was done in front of a green screen. Uh well, I mean, yeah. The funniest thing about that whole uh sequence is that it was shot in like four different places oh really? um, boy yeah it was um so if god if memory serves me correctly a lot of it started in hawaii obviously and a lot of the paragliding stuff was in hawaii and then we did some green screen of our coverage but we also had to there was some sort of thing that we had to reshoot I forget why, in Marina Del Rey, like, mm-hmm. months and months later. Um, and we shot it, because in Hawaii, we shot two, two different islands. So I want to say that some of it was on one island, some of it was on another island, and then we had the green screen, which was on a, st- a stage in um, Los Angeles, and then uh, a couple pickup shot stuff for, um, for uh, I guess, something that they need or didn't work. I can't remember why, but we had to do a pickup day in Marie Del Rey. So four separate locations wow. for that. Well, it's a good scene. Yeah. Last week, because have you, just by chance, have you seen the new one, the new Jurassic World that just came out? Uh, no, I have not. Okay. Is well, it awesome? Won't... It is awesome. We all loved it. Yeah. Um, but we, we had a long discussion about breaking down the opening scenes of all the movies and... Uh, they're all kind of special, like in their own ways. Um, so uh, the the pair I know I said hang gliding earlier, uh, which is different than paragliding uh, or parasailing. Um, that's a that's parasailing. Pretty, yeah, that's yeah, what it was. It's pretty. Uh, it's pretty memorable. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, really, the whole movie doesn't happen if those guys were just better boat drivers, <laughs> just not driving. <laughs> <laughs> they got too close to the yeah, island. I love, I love that you call it a boat driver. Yeah, he's a <laughs> boat driver. That's what they're called, right? Yeah, boat that's driver. definitely what they're because called. Because I, I actually made a joke like years ago to a friend of mine that that's what you call the this boat driver. Yeah, boat um, driver. Um, sort of like you know when you're on a train, the guy who's driving is the train driver. Yeah, train yeah. driver. Yeah. Or when you're on a pl- hey, yeah. we could keep going. There's all sorts of different vehicles plane out there. Driver. Plane driver. Yeah. Uh, uh, if yeah, the plane oh. driver, those guys, wow. Oh, or um, if you're if you're uh, conducting an infant, you're a baby driver. Oh, okay. <laughs> whoa. Okay. whoa. I just crossed the line, didn't I? Don't have spirit, um, so. well, listen, conducting tr- a baby. <laughs> <laughs> conducting. Yeah, when you're conducting, conducting a baby. Conducting is the only thing that actually makes it amazing. Well, it's here's the thing. Conducting in, in, a baby. In the philosophy. Your mind can go so many different ways. There's electricity that you think of. You'll right. think of that guy in front of the orchestra with a big... Yeah. <laughs> in the philosophy of breaking down what makes a joke funny, if I would have said driving a baby, I would have given Wait, away... I would have given it away. The, yeah. Yeah. You went with an old yeah. Like I just I, imagine that, like, I just imagine the person who's conducting the baby has some some sort of weird like marionette strings on the baby yeah obviously <laughs> it's like the in sync video to do what you need yeah. to um well listen trevor man we'll we'll catch up again soon we'll have you back on and and uh we'll we'll keep going because this was a lot of fun man we yeah. really appreciate it yeah for sure yeah thanks man yeah thanks for having me on guys all right man talk to you soon bye all right bye-bye bye dude